Hi everyone, welcome to Water Tanks with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie, you're not, and either any of these blokes, this is my old mate Pugsley from TC Clan, the culture. Pugsley in the uh, T54. Now this is going to be an extravaganza featuring some T54s. Now that's a T54 Tier 9 Russian medium tank, as well as the T54 lightweight. Four videos today, two videos featuring the T54 and two featuring the T54 lightweight in this Tier 9 extravaganza. Now at the start of the game, Pugsley, I think he might have just stalled the engine yet to give it a quick restart before he started uh, moving along on this game in Stalingrad. Lucky enough to be top tier in this battle. Four T nines in each team. An E75, a T54, a WZ120, and an RU251 on the enemy team. And Pugsley in his tier 9 platoon. Pretty good matchmaking for a tier 9 platoon with uh, Juggernaut for in a Leopard PTO. Pugsley in the T-54 and his old mate Penza in the T-49, the Derp Tank, the American Light Tank. And there, it looks like they're going to try and aggressively take the east on Stalingrad, which is probably the right thing to do for these kind of tanks that they've all picked up. Clearly, uh, they've got some kind of plan happening as the Tier 8 Czech Medium Tank gets taken out of the game. Um, four Tier 9s, as I said, and 11 Tier 8 Tanks in this battle on Stalingrad. See Pugsley, uh, looks looks like he's trying to get ready to take out some of these uh, enemy tanks. None of them really got too much armor that's going to worry the uh, T-54. He's clearly working with Juggernaut to say, right now, let's get rid of this Type 59, first of all. Use these undulations of, of the uh, of the land near the river to try and um, to try and minimize the chance of him getting shot from those other light tanks that are out closer to the water. Pugsley picks up the first kill of the game, getting rid of the Type 59, the premium Chinese medium tank. Unfortunately, nobody else has got a kill yet, so he's focusing on that uh, RU-251 by the looks of it down by near the water. He bounces the re return shot from the German Tier 9 light tank. One more shot should be enough. He's already up to 1,500 hit points of damage, and the Hawk 12 picks up the kill. 2-3 the score, 3 all the score now on Stalingrad, and Pugsley and his platoon, they're going to try and... Finish cleaning up this eastern flank of Stalingrad, the Stutzwagen S1, the T28 prototype, and the Lorraine 40 ton. All last spotted up here in the northeast. The Lorraine 40 ton, of course, he could be absolutely anywhere by now. Pugsley, you can see him looking at that Stutzwagen S1. That's the premium tier 8 Swedish tank destroyer. The T49 has just copped a shot from him. The auto aims, puts a shot into the side of the premium Swedish tank destroyer, takes him down to 261 hit points. Penza gets taken out by the said S1. And it looks like is he getting ready to shoot Pugsley or is he running away? Doesn't matter because Pugsley picks up kill number two. Now the T-54 medium tank has got a 100mm gun, 320 average damage, 219 penetration with standard, 330 penetration with uh, heat rounds which is premium and um, pretty well known that the heat rounds are they're quite expensive but uh, nonetheless it is a pretty awesome tank. Pugsley on three kills now. Score six all though, so it's not really, it's not quite going to be enough for to to carry the game. He's going to have to do a little bit more than three kills. Looking at the mini map, you can see in the southwest the VK100, the M4A1 Revelarisi, the WZ120, and the T54 on the enemy team all down there. They're about to clean up the uh, 212A T9 artillery as well as the Rheinmetall Borsig Waffentrager. Everyone's pinging the map like you would not believe. You can see the Super Pershing and the T34-3 along with the Hawk 12 trying to engage the M. 46 KR, the Korean pattern, and it uh, looks like Pugs is going to try and join in that party. No, he doesn't have to because the T26 C4 Super Pershing's picked up that kill. 8-9 the score now. The South West has been uh, absolutely smashed. The Rheumatol and that Russian artillery never had a chance against those, looks like, five or six enemy tanks down there. The E75 and the Lorraine 40 ton, both being held off by the Super Pershing here over here. Now, Two Super Pershings in this team. A little bit of World of Premium tax in this battle. If you look at the lineup on the left hand side of the screen, T34 3, two Super Pershings, Alpine Tiger, two Scorpion Gs. It's uh, it's absolutely out of control. As Pugsley finds the Super Pershing, puts a shot into him, takes him down to 508 hit points, bounces a return shot. He... There you go, kill number four. Line it up, aim and shoot. Now that VK100 A1P, even though it's only tier 8, it is on pretty high health. And uh, Pugsley clearly looking at the mini map and probably talking to Juggernaut in uh, in Teamspeak or Discord or whatever they use over at the Culture to try to work out like we need to stay together. Down by two tanks, we can still do this though. Pugsley's still got plenty of hit points up up his sleeve. He's done 2860 hit points of damage as well as blocked a little bit and just a whisker of assisted damage. 
10-12 the score. Looking towards that Revel Arisi by the looks of it. One shot won't be enough. He bounces the return shot. Gives him a little bit of a love tap, but the love tap isn't quite enough to get the kill. But, uh, so he has to put one more clip into the premium French medium tank. One shot into the side of the T-54. Now the T-54 doesn't really know what to do. Nemesis in the T-26 E4 picks up that kill. Pugsley on five kills now. 12 all is the score. Somebody's clearly capping. My money's on the VK-100 01P. But it looks like the VK has just changed his mind and decided he wants to uh, go after these medium tanks. And he gets his wish. Gets rid of the super purging. Nemesis, he's had a pretty good game too with three kills. And now Pugsley looking to do what medium tanks do well and try and um, try and flank him but didn't really get the flank happening puts one shot into the VK100 and now he's looking for the Lorraine 42 lick my goat I saw him not too long ago in a game takes one shot bounces the second one Juggernaut uh, puts a shot into the Lorraine but also gets killed and I reckon that might be the fourth and final shot from the from the French premium medium tank Pugsley smart enough to switch to standard rounds now because that Lorraine 40T has absolutely no armour whatsoever. And now there's uh, two pretty heavily armoured enemy tanks left. The E75 and the VK 100-01P. Unfortunately his first shot misses the VK. He's trying to get behind the VK 100-01P. This is the heavy German tank, the one that leads to the mouse. He's on 1208 hit points. Shoots. No idea where that shot went. No idea why the E75 didn't fire either. Or maybe he did. Now the Pugsley here from the culture. He's already on six kills. He's picked himself up a top gun. He needs to uh, put his carry pants on. He's got two marks of excellence on that T54. It's one versus two. Now we know the VK is on about, was that 1,200 hit points? I don't think he took any more damage off that uh, heavy German tier 8 tank. And of course the big E75 is still in the mist as well. KV4 is calling for Pugsley to cap. Not sure. Oh, well, the... there you go. That's sort of certainly out of the question now. And, of course, these two German heavy tanks have worked out that they don't have the speed and the mobility to get uh, Pugsley from the culture. And their best bet is to sit on the cap and, and draw him in. Now, he does get spotted from that E75. Now, that E75 is on 1,654 hit points. Now, that... Um, at six shots. That's going to take him six shells to kill the E75, let alone the VK100 A1P. And, uh, of course, he's going to need to do that as well to well, to reset the cap. And on top of that, that VK is still on 1,200 hit points as well. Puts one shot into the VK. Unfortunately, the VK wasn't the one on the cap. Still, um... Looks like the VK's not even going to try to shoot Pugsley. Unfortunately, that second shot into the VK bounced. Now, it looks like, see, you can see that the E75 is aiming Pugsley's way. The VK sort of wasn't, though. 15 seconds left on the cap. And, of course, he's going to need to do something. And he does. Gets a shell into the turret of the E75. Plenty of people still watching this game. They've clearly got faith in Pugsley. He's on six kills, 5,678 hit points up his sleeve, as well as six kills. So he's already confirmed the top gun. But if he's going to win this, he's going to have to turn this into a Radley Walters. Six minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. But that not the clock you're going to worry about. It's the base capture clock. It's down to 17 seconds. Now, 17 seconds will uh, change pretty quickly. Luckily enough for Pugsley, his tracks eat up the uh, damage from the E75. He bounces the uh, the VK, and he's going to have to. He wants to. He really wants to kill one of these tanks. So that's only going to be one tank on the cap circle with 17 seconds left on the cap timer. 13, 14 is the score. 6,351 hit points. Now, if these two, if these two heavy tanks actually work together and just uh, went straight after Pugsley, they would certainly. Uh, they would certainly. Uh, be able to kill him. The VK does shoot him, takes him down to 25 hit points and Pugsley puts a shot into the VK 100 P. but he's got no health left. He's done 6,660 damage and he can't go too far from this cap circle because uh, obviously the, the cap timer is not going to go down much further than uh, 20 seconds with both of them on there. He keeps resetting it, which is the right thing to do, and slowly chipping away at their health, but none of those two German heavy tanks are, are one-shots. You can see the E75 there, and the VK, both on both on 600, puts a shot into the VK, 
And he'll certainly reload before that German. And hopefully there's a kill. There it is. Kill number seven. Now there's only one tank left on the cap with 30 seconds to go. Uh, of course, Bugsley, don't get your chickens yet. He's only on 25 hit points. Starts moving back there. Looks like he was trying to make the VK think he's going to go around these buildings. And now he's going to look... Is he going to get one away? Yeah, he does catch the E75 napping a little bit. The E75 shoots and... Uh, his tracks eked the shot, puts another shot into the E75, will he be able to beat him on the reload, he's still got heat rounds loaded, no he pulls back, doesn't want to risk it, doesn't want to lose it at this point of the game, he's got a minute and a half to uh, to work out what he wants to do, how he wants to put one more shell into the E75, they're both one shots for each other, uh, Pugsley been very, well not, would you say he's been lucky, or um, would you say it's been uh, lucky or skillful driving. I would say a little bit of both. He was angling his tank uh, very, very well. And he, look, he bounced nearly through, nearly 2,400 hit points of damage. He nearly, uh, he bounced. Now, he did get spotted there when he crossed on the minimap, that little gap there. He got spotted by the E75. Now, the E75 is going to, if he's got half a brain, he's going to expect him to be coming from this angle. He's got 50 seconds to work out which direction he wants to, uh, approach this one from. Taking a wide berth, he doesn't want to get spotted. He wants to spot the E75 before the E75 sees him. Now you'd think that the T-54 would have a better view range than the E75 being a medium tank, but the difference, depending on equipment and stuff, the difference might only be a few metres, so he wants to take his time. Still got nearly 30 seconds before the E75 caps out. Just taking his time, taking a bit of a wide berth here, down to 20 seconds now. He wants to be careful. Let's see what he does. 14, 13, he's coming back around, he wants to, uh, that 9 seconds is going to turn into 0 pretty quickly, oh, and that, the E75 is aiming his way, but he doesn't fire, the E75 waited just a little bit too long to aim, Pugsley pulls off the win of a lifetime, and of course, not just the win of a lifetime, but a, um, a very, very valuable Radley Walters medal, let's have a look at the battle result, it'll come as no surprise that that was an ace tanker, uh, thank you very much. An Ace Tanker Mastery Badge. Hand of God, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect, Shell Proof for having the total damage blocked by armor exceed the hit points of the vehicle. Radley Walters for picking up those eight kills. The Defender Medal, no surprise there. Steel Ball, High Caliber, and the Top Gun. Have a look at that. Game of his life indeed. 7,903 hit points of damage in the end. 8 kills, 1665 base experience, 10 epic medals. He's had an absolute ripper. Only only 4 other teams broke the 1,000 uh, hit points of damage. Uh, but a hell of a game. That E75 and oh, well, the VK100. Look, they didn't... Yeah, they, Looking at what they did in game, they certainly didn't deserve to win it. Pugsley from the culture had an absolute pearl. It cost him a couple of thousand credits, but who cares when you can pull off an epic victory like that one. As we move on to the second game in this uh, extravaganza of Tier 9 Russians. This is the T-54 Lightweight. This is Crazy from Crown Clan. Now, Crazy from Crown in the T-54 Lightweight, you can see he's got a mark of excellence on his gun barrel as well. These T-54s and T-54 Lightweight certainly shaping up to be um, favourites of people who play and I oh, know actually I absolutely love these two tanks but uh, look I enjoy the tier 10s even more and this one the T54 lightweight's got a PCR for standard and premium rounds Set 250 hit points of damage 208 pen with standard 235 with premium rounds so not a massive uh, advantage but it's got a pretty good rate of fire is he's put two shots into that Sheridan the tier 10 American light tank and that's uh, basically take, taking 500 odd hit points off his health as he goes into the middle of Fisherman's Bay looking for some vision for his team which is the right thing to do in a light tank just having a look around there playing around is uh it is a tier 10 game just just two tier 10 tanks on each team uh, is that a mission he's on four kills and do damage six times that's uh look that's certainly doable let's just see let's just see how he goes no uh, other conditions. He's on one of those one of those personal missions. Zero zero is the score. He's picked up 495 early early damage uh, into the Sheridan. That's a tier 10 American light tank, as mentioned earlier. Uh, he's platooned up with his old mates from Juice Clan or Juch. Uh, Nizi Kibachu 
and uh, Totu JP. Now, Nizzy Kimichu has been on this channel before, some time ago now. Uh, I don't. Th I'm not sure if he was in Juice Clan back then. I don't think he was. He might have even been in Crown Clan. Maybe that's maybe that's the connection. Uh, don't forget to check out Crazy on Twitch as well. Very very good player, uh, and uh, there'll be a link. There'll be a link down below, down there somewhere, with uh, along with the usual crap that I put down there. Does get spotted by the Sheridan, hoping for a cheeky shot into the American light tank. Now this game's not going to go for quite as long as uh, Pugsley's game, but I'm sure it'll be pretty excited as the M40, M43 Tier 8 American Artillery picks up the kill on the Fock at Tier 9. Now this is a Tier 10 game. He auto aims again at the Sheridan, puts a shell into him, takes him down to 860 hit points, so he's not that far off half health. Unfortunately, Dizzy Kibichu goes down in the E50. One of my favourite tier 9. Medium tax, the E50. I don't have it anymore, but it was a pretty... It treated me pretty well, the old uh, the old E50. But anyway, this is about crazy. Been the T54 lightweight. Now, the T54 lightweight, if you remember when it was at tier 8, if you ever played tier 8 skirmishes or clan wars, the T54 lightweights were just everywhere because they were very, very versatile light tank and you could, you could almost call it a medium. You know, it had a decent... It's got a pretty... That turret... That well-rounded turret uh, was pretty pretty decent. I, I think they did change some of the parameters, but when it was a tier 8, it was certainly pretty good for its tier, that's for sure. But anyway, here we are in Fisherman's Bay. 1-2's the score. They're down by one tank. E50 and the FB4202 have both been taken out of Crazy's team. Uh, the enemy team lost their tier 9. Fock, that's the uh, French tank destroyer. Now you can see there's a bit of an engagement happening over there has a look at the back of the object 252u that's a defender puts one shot in six cents doesn't go off so he probably thinks well might as well uh, might as well get a little bit more damage in get spotted now possibly by the amx 30 but doesn't matter he wants to help his team put another cheeky shot into the conqueror still nobody aiming at him so why not just put another shot in 1482 damage already and that's a good thing about this tank the rate of fire is fantastic Goes for the kill rather than the damage on the Object 252U because he wants to even the scoreboard up as much as he can. Puts another shell into the Object 252U. And uh, look, I reckon he might even get another one. This is just this is money for jam. And Crazy from ground is just laughing all the way to the bank as the T110E4 grabs the kill on that defender, the Object 252U. And that brings their... Brings the, the score to a lead for the first time in this game. 4-3. Graze him from crown. He's on one kill. 2,028 damage already. 1,469 assisted damage. And it looks like he's going to try and help this northeastern push. Try to maybe get rid of the Sheridan. Maybe even clean up any artillery pieces that might be uh, hiding up there in the northeast corner. Let's see if he can find some. 5 threes to score. The WZ120. I think that was on the other side of the map. Got taken out by artillery. Some, but one pretty big gun sounded like it just fired towards the Sheridan. Sheridan down to 78 hit points. Um, crazy scooting right up here. Not fighting any artilleries. The Sheridan goes down to the Fock. That's uh, Totu JP. No relation uh, in the platoon. Finds the Batchat 12T. Does get spotted though. Puts a shot into the Batchat 12T. That's the auto loading tier 8 French light tank. Kicking back here, not quite sure if he's unspotted yet or not. Doesn't want to cop a, a big shell from any of the tanks that are up here in the north, uh, in the northwest. Of course, that Rivertail Borsig, Waffentrager, and the Scorpion G have not yet been spotted. Very good chance that they might be up there in the northeast. There's the Rivertail Borsig, Waffentrager. Now that gun on the tier eight German tank destroyer, uh, whether it's the 120 or the 150 millimeter gun, it would certainly, uh, it would certainly hurt a little. Um, D54 lightweight. The ISU-152 gets spotted as well. Looks like it wasn't spotted by Crazy. It looks like he didn't get the assisted damage, but the ISU-152 is G-O-R-N gone. Now he's getting some assisted damage on the Rheimatol Borsig Waffentrager. And with the score at 8-6, and those two tank destroyers taken care of, of course, the Object 268 was last spotted down at H1, the Scorpion G up at E1. That's why Crazy is saying, well, I can confidently go forward and try and spot these artilleries. And there they are. Puts one shot into the SU-142. Now the SU-142 is trying to aim crazy ways. Crazy's way. The auto aims. Kills the SU-142. Rams the Batchat. Shoots and kills the Tiger P. Now he reckons the Batchat might be on the reload, I reckon. That's why he, he 
concentrated on the artilleries before the batch at 12 too, the autoloading French light tank, knowing that uh, if one of those artillery pieces had have got him, he would have been in a world of trouble. There he's up. He's up to four kills now. 3,614 damage, 2,500 assisted damage. A lot of map ping going on. He's good. It looks like he might be going for the T-92 heavy tank. Uh, heavy tank. HMC. That's the uh, American artillery. Finds a Scorpion G instead. Puts one shell into the premium German tank destroyer. Takes him down to 574. One more shot to be even better. And he does. He's also, you can see a Mouskin there. Of course, that Mouskin uh, is be, might be a little bit challenging to penetrate, especially while he's behind that rock. The score's 12-7. Somebody else, his platoon mate kills the Scorpion G. And he's going to go arty hunting. It looks like he might be. 4,322 hit points of damage. 2,500 assisted damage. Auto Wames shoots. <laughs> Just as the fuck fires, he shoots. Misses out on his fifth kill, but he's on the four kills. Totu JP on three kills. And the artillery in the end gets rid of that Mouskin. And in the end, it's a victory. 15-7 to seven on Fisherman's Bay as we have a quick look at the result. And that was a game that gave Crazy from Crown Clan. His second mark of excellence in that tank, the T-54 lightweight, second mark of excellence. I'm sure he'll pick up a third one um, in the very near future. If you want to see him try and pick up a third one, tune in to him on Twitch. Link will be down at the bottom. Uh, very, very good player indeed. Ace tanker, spider medal, bruiser, fighter, fire for effect, and of course the Pascucci's medal for killing those two artillery pieces. Top the score charts, 4,322 damage, four kills, 1,308 base experience, uh, 21 shots fired, 18 hit, 17 did damage, 2,578 assisted damage. That's why he got the uh, spider medal. And of course, that assisted damage, as always, goes a long way towards picking up those ace tankers. And with uh, personal reserves running, he made nearly 94,000 credits in that seven and a half minute game. Very, very well done for me, old mate. Crazy from Crown Clan. He's done that well that uh, it's well worth having another look at. Uh, this game, this time on Westfield, in the same old, um, in the same, in the same old tank. C54 lightweight. You see, he's got two marks of excellence on the gun barrel now. He's platooned up with his old mate No Arty from Flex Clan on Westfield, and of course No Arty is in an artillery, an M53, M55, T9 American artillery. The one that's argue. Some, a lot of people say that M53, M55 is better than the T10. Um, I'll be interested to, interested to hear your thoughts on that. Is it better than... The, even though this is a light tank video, is it better? It often comes up. Uh, I'm not sure I don't have the T10. I've got the T9, but... Uh, who knows? Anyway, Crazy from Crown is going up to do what light tanks often do on this map. Spot the East. Finds himself a WZ1328. Doesn't want to engage him uh, all by himself. Does get the first shot in, though. Takes him down to 1,000 odd hit points. And then it uh, looks like somebody else got him for 99. That could have been maybe the M4190 Grand Final tank. Maybe that was one of those hep rounds that you see on that premium light tank. Now that, you'll be hoping that the Scorpion Gs as well as the uh, M4190 uh, are um, trying to get him, trying to uh, snipe away. Losing his load. It does put a shot into the WZ132A. Now, of course, that's a T9 uh, Chinese light tank, which I've been playing myself lately. It's quite a fun little tank to play. Wow, that nearly went down the wrong way. 0-2 the score now. In a little bit of strife. He's hoping somebody can shoot that WZ. Now, this is a tier 9 game. Five tier 9s on each time. On each team. That certainly, uh, wow, that was that was a, a, a massive ammo rack from the WZ111-4. Um, no, I think, actually, I think that was that, oh, who knows. I think it might be, it might be just about time for Crazy to start shooting, I think. His team are down 0-4. to four. Uh, What's he going to do in this situation? He's got, I reckon he's... There's not enough guns aiming at these tanks. He's, he's worked that out that he's going to have to start shooting sooner or later. He's down one to four. Probably should have backed off a little bit with, um, you know, try to use those bushes a bit maybe. I'm not really sure. I'm sure Crazy knows what he's doing though. One five is the score. They finally get a kill. The Alpine Tiger on the enemy team. 
goes down. This might be around about the time the Alpine Tigers were given out because there's two Alpine Tigers on each team. Um, and they're not the only premium tanks in this game. The 112, the T26E5, a couple of Scorpion Gs, the M4190, uh, another T26E5. Wow, they're everywhere. Even, in fact, almost all of the tier 8s on the enemy team, every tier 8 apart from the uh, T44 and the Batchat 12T are premium tanks. And it's not that much different uh, on, on Crazy's team. No arty from Flex uh, in uh, Krasib's platoon. Clearly not too happy with the uh, with the efforts of the heavy tanks. He's uh, expressed his displeasure to his platoon mate in the chat. Krasib's sitting there, calm, cool, and collected. So, I mean, if you look at the map, it's. Well, I guess the advantage might be on Krasib's team. It's certainly not on Krasib's uh, side of the map. Uh, rather, not so much. Uh, his team, that's for sure. But if you look at where all the red tanks are, there's so many red tanks there. There, if they were to push aside, it would have to be this side. But uh, with a score of one to eight, looks like they're going to go back and try and uh, protect the cap, or maybe just try and get some uh, cheap shots. That WZ triple one one dash four, I think, is the ta is that a tank that ammo racked that tank earlier on. Who knows? That many tanks have died. He's doing the right thing here. He wants to get rid of the WZ Triple One Dash Four. If you can have any chance to win this game, they've got to get rid of some of these Tier Nines pretty quickly. They are down by eight tanks, though. The score's one nine. Now, don't forget that the score is one nine. Puts a shot into the Panther. Now he's only done 935 hit points of damage using his uh, light tank camouflage rating quite well here. Using these bushes, waiting till they go opaque before he shoots. One ten though. The M4190 goes down. That WZ. 132A finally gets killed by the Scorpion. Now that WZ triple one one dash four is in a little bit of a look. It's I suppose you'd call it a cute position to go in, but it's a very awkward position as well. He's going to have a, a hard time getting out of there. And I guess if uh, Crazy and No Arty are talking in uh, TeamSpeak or Discord or whatever they use, uh, he might be saying, "Look, that uh, WZ, he's not going anywhere. Uh, you could probably drop a shell or two on him." Sounds like artillery just fired. 6 10 the score now. Only down by four tanks. And this batch at 12T on 13 hit points. Look, if if I was this Centurion 7 1 driver, I'd be fancying myself in that little uh, skirmish. But Crazy says, Hold my beer, I've got this. He goes forward, kills the batch at 12T. Now that E50 on 662 hit points. Uh, clearly. Um, on his way to try and get Crazy as well as that Centurion. Now there's that WZ triple one one dash four, and from a distance just misses eight eleven. Only down by three now. Remember they were down by eight tanks not too long ago. Now they're only down by two tanks with the score on nine eleven. Still got a hell of a lot of work to do. The Leopard PTA having an absolute ripper. He's on four kills. The Centurion's the Centurion's got one. The Centurion clearly wants to stick with. Uh, Crazy in the T-54 lightweight. Leopard PTA keeping some vision to the north for uh, keeping some vision to the north for no arty in in the arty and of course that uh, M-53 M-55 will be feeling a little bit nervous right about now as uh, Crazy continues to scout out the east. He'll be hoping that Centurion can uh, do something about the E-50. Uh, the E-50 only on 276 hit points Crazy gets shot, tracked, and damaged. He's down to 264 hit points. That Centurion does not seem interested in that E50 at all. I don't know. Maybe I'm... I know I wear glasses, but I'm not completely blind. I have no idea why that Centurion 7-1 isn't going for the kill on that E50. Uh, I just have no idea at all. In the end, the Centurion goes down. Now, it wasn't that Centurion on... Wasn't that Centurion on pretty much full health? Artillery gets the kill on the E50. He'll be feeling pretty happy about that. Now, that T54 was last spotted around about here. So that uh, M53, M55 will be feeling a little bit nervous. What's the, the Jag Tiger? What's he, what direction's he heading in? Looks like he's heading for the... Um, I don't know. It looks like he's... Maybe he's going a long way to head towards the cap. 10 13's a score. They're only down by three tanks. No arty from Flex Clan in the artillery, the M53, M55. Crazy in the T54 lightweight. Crazy on 1409 hit points of damage. Oh, 
Oh, surprise that one pen to me, actually. You can see the Jag Tiger's still stunned and uh, shows his sight. Puts the blind shot in. Now, did you see that on the right-hand side of the screen? That artillery got killed by the T-54 just before Crazy put that kill shot in to the JTIG 8.8, the premium tier 8 German. Tank that's right. That means because the artillery died for a split second just before um, that uh, JTIG was killed. That means that means that uh, that means that uh, Crazy did line for a Kalabanovs here. For a second, it was one versus five. So Kalabanovs medal is certainly up for grabs. He's only on he's only on 194 hit points. Reasonably lucky that the um, that T-44 fired high explosive round into him then. It only took him for 70 hit points. I guess the T-44 was thinking, or well, maybe he still had high explosive lo loaded for the um, for the artillery. Now you can see enemy artillery just fired back there to where um, Crazy was. Now, no arty. No Arty is uh, giving Crazy some, some good uh, advice here. So he, clearly, No Arty's got XVM installed, saying that, that Lorraine's got a 44% win rate with a 250 WN8, which indicates that there's a very good chance is uh, just a, an AFK player, not uh, a bot, if you if you will. 12 14 is the score. Crazy is on three kills, 2012 damage, 3,813 assisted damage. This is the third battle in this tier 9 extravaganza. Crazy from Crown Clan. Don't forget to check him out on Twitch. Uh, there's only 5 minutes and 20 seconds left in this replay. He's knocking trees and stuff over left, right and centre. I'm not sure if he's doing that on purpose for the benefit of the M53, M55 uh, on the enemy team. You can see there's the Alpine Tiger who got his head blown off. Look at that. He hasn't got a turret left at all. That uh, poor little Alpine Tiger driver and Crazy from Crown Clan, looking uh, looking for the Scorpion G. Now, the Scorpion G, the most the most forward uh, tank left on the enemy team, gets a little bit of air, and that Scorpion G. There's the M53, M55, and he'll be saying, "No worries, I'll uh, two shots might be enough, maybe three. There's the first one. This will be the second shot. No, he misses." The second shot, 12-14 is a score. Four and a half minutes left in this game. Uh, at least he hasn't been spotted. Puts another shot into the M53, M55. Leaves him on eight hit points. You can see the um, you can see the Scorpion G. And he's got standard rounds loaded. He doesn't need premium rounds because, uh, of course, the Scorpion G, as well as that uh, M53, M55, both very, very lightly armoured. Puts another blind shot towards where the Scorpion G and the M53, M55 might be. Kicks back in these bushes, hoping to spot the M53, M55. It looks like that the Tier 9 artillery is thinking, well, we might as well try and cap this one out. There's the artillery. Thank you very much. That's his fourth kill. Now, he doesn't have to worry about artillery hitting him anymore. And that Scorpion G, did he... I think he only put one shot into the Scorpion G. So Scorpion G, probably down to around about 900 hit points or just under... And of course, there's also a Lorraine 40T. Who knows where that Lorraine 40T could be? But I think the Scorpion G is probably the more immediate threat. If anything, that uh, is Platoon, mate. No Artie from Flex Clan. Uh, if, if what he said is anything to go by, then that Lorraine 40T possibly um, isn't really a threat. And once he, he really probably wants to get rid of the Scorp and then maybe go looking for that Lorraine 40 ton. No idea why the Scorp hasn't gotten back on the cap. Of course, the Scorpion is never going to catch Crazy in the T-54 lightweight. <coughs> the, 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 the Scorpion's best bet is probably to, to sit on cap and, and draw him draw him towards him. He does get spotted there because his gun was just poking around that building. So he moves back into a position where he's no longer, hopefully, no longer lit. he going to do? Is he going to... He's only on 194 hit points. That's a one-shot for the Scorp. It's also a one-shot for the Lorraine. Now, the Scorpion G doing the right thing and uh, heading straight for where Crazy is. Two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. I've just sped the replay up a bit because there's a little bit of cat and mouse going on around about now. There's the, there's the Scorpion G. He does get spotted again. He fires, but who knows where that shell went. But Crazy does not get lit. That's probably the important part, even though he... Uh, 
he wasted, even though he wasted the shell as the two minute siren goes off. There's one shot into the Scorpion D, takes him down to 668 hit points. So it's still, still going to take three shots to kill him, but uh, more importantly, um, Crazy does not want to lose any health. Hoping for the tracking shot there. He goes unspotted. Spots him again because he's actually backed out of that bush. Puts another shot down to 265. He'll need a high roll if this one's going to kill him. Probably regretting not... Oh, 249. That's, oh, that's dead on. Average 250. That's Scorpion G down to 16 hit points. 13, 14 to score. 1 minute and 22 seconds left in this game. And that's what his platoon mates letting him know in the in-game chat. 13, 14 to score. 3,596 hit points of damage. It's getting to the stage where he has to just go for it. And that Scorpion on um, 16 hit points. Auto aim. One shot into him. Don't slow down. Looks like he's going to be heading straight for the enemy cap. Um, speeding it up again because I'm pretty confident. This is the first time I've seen this game, but I'm pretty confident that that Lorraine 40T might still be at base. No, there he is, over there. Certainly not uh, not a bot. Puts one shell into him, takes him down to 1,062 hit points. Now that Lorraine is not moving. 30 seconds left. Has he got enough time? I mean, he certainly did. Crazy certainly deserves this win. The Lorraine 40T El Saba won. Well, who knows what happens. Maybe the phone rang. Maybe he got a case of the trots. Maybe his missus said, let's go for a little bit of hanky-panky. Two more shots should be enough. Ten seconds left. What's the reload? Gee, I hope this next shot doesn't bounce. He's only on 120 hit points. He's got APCR loaded. And that's it for the win. As well as a top gun. A very, very well-deserved victory. Even though it went for the full 15 minutes. And it might have been, at times, a little bit painful to watch. But uh, he carried the shit out of that one. It's another Ace Tanker Mastery Badge for Crazyip from Crown Clan. Now, don't forget to check out his Twitch. It'll all be down below. Ace Tanker Mastery Badge, the Spotter Medal, Bruiser, Duelist, Pfeiffer Effect, Calabanos Medal, as I mentioned, just after his platoon mate died is when he killed that JTIG 8.8. And that's why he was eligible for the Calabanos. Patrol duty, high caliber and top gun. Carried the hell out of it. Uh, top score by an absolute mile. Nearly 5,000 hit points of damage. Six skills, 1565 base experience. He got some He got, uh, He got. got some defense points as well. 3,813 assisted damage. That's absolutely fantastic. He fired 32 shots, 27 hit, 26 did damage. Made it uh, a little bit of coin, even though he had to fire premium towards the end because that's all he had left. But uh, not a bad ace, Kolobanov's in that 15 minute game uh, in the T54 lightweight. Crazy from Crown Clan. Check him out on Twitch as we move on to the fourth and final replay in this extravaganza featuring some tier eight Russian tanks. Sorry, tier eight, tier nine Russian tanks. This is back to the T54. Uh, of course it was T54 lightweights. And of course there was a T54 at, uh, at the beginning with me. I'll make the culture from, from um, what's it called? The name of the map, Stalingrad. Now, right here, the flying tool is uh, Seek. This is Seeker 17. I'm pretty sure this is Seeker's debut on uh, World of Tanks with Stewie JP at Get On Board Studios. Now, he's platooned up with his old mate, the flying tool from Banff Clan. Now, the flying tool, I don't know him, uh, in the WZ111-4. You could um, you could argue that being a top-tier heavy, uh, sitting on the red line up at A3, you could, uh, you could argue that he's living up to his, uh, his name. But uh, I'm tipping the Seeker 17 and saying, hold my beard, I've got this, I'll uh, do this. Now, he could be on a mission or something like that, but I don't, I don't think there's many heavy tank missions which require people to uh, sit on the red line, especially at top tier. Uh, I'm not really sure what the Flying Tool is thinking. Flying Tool, if you're watching, let us know. What are you thinking going up there in a top tier heavy tank? In a tank destroyer, I would... I've done it myself. You can see the Scorpion G up there, but in a top tier heavy tank, not too sure. He's uh, trying to do something uh, a little bit cute, I guess. One all's a score. Seeker 17 from Banff Clan in the T54. He's found uh, found the looks like it was a bulldog he was going to try and kill, but uh, the T54 mod one beat him to it. Now, without giving too much away, don't blink. This is not going to be like some of the other replays. This is Fast and Furious action on Overlord. The Seeker 17 from Banff Clan in the T54 puts a shot into the low. Two walls to score. The Tiger 2 goes down on uh, a different part of the map. 
Lots of enemy tanks here. Shoots and penetrates the low at tier 8. It's a tier 8 German heavy tank. Now that low is not a tank I've got, but uh, it's armor. I think the armor got a buff a while ago now. To all the score. Picked up a little bit of damage. He's showing great patience, just waiting for opportunities. Doesn't want to just dive over and kill the low while that uh, especially while that guard is aiming his way no it looks like the guard's not aiming his way so he's saying no worries hold my beer i've got this puts a shot into the low playing a little bit of uh head to head with the guard now that guard's got a pretty good gun for a tier 8 medium tank but it has got a very very long reload you can see the guard trying to get the hell out of dodge seeker picks up his second kill Something just hit the AX 1390. I hope it wasn't. Uh, I hope it wasn't uh, Seeker. Seeker picks up his second kill. He's got uh, 1886 hit points of damage so far. Puts another shot into the object 416. One more shot should be enough, and that's his third kill. And there's another low. That low fails to penetrate uh, Seeker in the T54. He's got heat rounds loaded. He's looking for some more uh, shots. On to the low. WZ111-4, the flying tool, still kicking back up here at A3. It's, uh, I, I, hope, uh, I hope he doesn't take this the wrong way, but I think that's a bit of a shit position still to be in. But I think he might actually be stuck. Uh, I'm not really sure looking at it. I've never used that position. Anyway, Seeker17 from Banff. What I went on the RU251. The RU251, just a little bit too quick. Now, the... <laughs> The Seeker 17 from Banff, even though he's been right in the midst of all this brawling, is still on full health. He has blocked 820 odd hit points. Um, looking for more kill shots. Auto aims on the RU251. Gives him a bit of a love tap there as well. Goes for the kill. Misses out on the kill. Mitt Faust in the AMX 1390 from my clan from 1AA. He picks up the kill on that occasion. 9-5 is the score. Flying Tool still kicking back up there at A3. I reckon he might be stuck. Seacut, 17 from Bamp Clan. In the T-54, 1,548 uh, hit points still up his sleeve. He's up to nearly 4,000 damage done. Cops his first couple of damaging shots from a couple of camping tank destroyers, the Scorpion G and the Stritchwagon 103-0. Now, the Stritchwagon's one I'd be worried about. That does have a pretty tidy reload. 11-6 a score now. The results are foregone conclusion. The flying tool still uh, stuck up there. Seeker 17 shoots and misses the Stritzwagen. Turns his attention to the Oho and he'll be thinking, no worries whatsoever. Let's have try and farm a bit more damage on the Oho first and then get rid of the autoloader. That's his fifth kill. He's on a top gun here. Looks like the uh, bat chat might be on the reload. He rams him, shoots him once. One more shot should be enough, and it'll be a top gun unless the low is going to steal it. It looks like the low is going to steal it. 14 to 7 is the score. Five kills to Seeker 17 from Banff Clan. Looking for that Scorpion G. He's got switching to high explosive rounds here. You can see that there for a little bit higher alpha damage. Uh, let's see if it works. That's very, very... <laughs> waited, waited for the opportunity to pick up the kill and uh, confirm the top gun. And like I said, that uh, game is a little bit quicker than the other ones. It's an Ace Tagger Mastery Badge for Seeker 17 from Banff Clan. Big welcome to get on board Studio Seeker 17. And uh, the Bruiser Medal, Duelist and Fire for Effects, High Calibre, Top Gun, Carried that one, 5,088 hit points of damage, 1,386 base experience, he fired 24 shots, 18 hit, they all did damage, blocked a little bit, got a little bit of assisted, the flying tool, not sure what you're thinking there, me old mate, uh, one damaging shot from that red line is uh, not what you would expect for a top tier heavy, but maybe there were some problems there, maybe he was trying something different, who knows, Seeker 17, carried the shit out of that one, 5,088 damage, uh, made a little bit of credits though, but there was some heat rounds which would have uh, affected the profitability of that game. But you take a top gun and a curry like that any day of the week. A massive thanks for everyone's replays in today's videos. Uh, Crazy from Crown. Make sure you check him out on Twitch. Seeker17 making his debut and of course Pugsley from the culture in the T54. Uh, thanks everyone for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Don't feel free to Give us a like or a subscribe or check us out on Twitter, Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Details all down there. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Take care and see you all next time.